Listen, I did film and television studies at university for three years. I spent hours reading countless books and articles on subjects spanning from film all the way to television. Not a single one mentioned Hugh Grant once. I achieved the hardest qualification across any university or college ever, a 2-1 in history. Let me tell you, the only thing that I learned was that we, as a society, have a history of denying and neglecting Hugh Grant's artistic and cultural relevance, not just in this country, but in the entire world. I met Oscar at a Hugh Grant-themed event I put on at the Students' Union. It felt as though Diggory and I were the only ones there. And we agreed that there was a Hugh Grant-shaped hole in academia. We decided to put it right ourselves. We want to show people that he's an icon in acting. We want to show people he's more than just a bumbling posh guy. I'm Diggory Waite. And I'm Oscar Beardmore Gray. And, and this, this is... Take it you for granted. Hello and welcome to Taking Hugh For Granted, the podcast in which two Hugh Grant enthusiasts watch every single film starring Hugh Grant in the attempt to answer the simple question, is this film taking Hugh For Granted? Is this film good on its own or does it rely on the bumbling Brit for its acclaim? I'm Digby Waite and I'm joined as always by my colleague and fellow Hugh Grant obsessive Oscar Beard, my great Oscar. How the hell are you doing today, mate? Diggs, I'm very, very well and I'm doing even better than normal because Christmas has come for the second time oh yes i have fi- i know i mentioned uh on the best of 2020 episode that i hadn't received any hugh grant related presents it was it was a very sad sad christmas for me whereas you mm. you know you you received your hugh grant mask which i still mm. haven't ordered but anyway i have now received a very late christmas present with a Hugh grant related theme and i'm going to show it to you now that the people won't be able to see it at home but your reaction hopefully We'll say it all. So I can't wait. it is a little triage <gasps> oh. of Hugh Grant's <laughs> Love Actually dance. It, oh my word! That sort of you know not not the actual photos, but kind of like no. paintings, illustrations, and it's a the, it's a beautiful and they're trio. framed. Yeah, framed. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. So you can put them up on the wall. Yeah. And be reminded of Hugh Grant all the way. And you'll probably, if you put him up on the wall, you'll probably be dancing past it just like Hugh Grant. And you'll be looking at them on the wall and go, yeah, mate, you inspired this dance. I, I should probably put them like, actually, a good place for them might be on the stairs. Because like when you go down the stairs, you'll be doing <laughs> yes. the, the little gym. The way you, exactly. Or a place what, sort of on the landing so that you can do the, uh, like with two bits opposite so you can do the bit where he sort of like crabs along exactly <laughs> yeah oh my god that's amazing who got you those my sister so shout out to Absolutely my sister she, she listened to she's a dutiful listener she listened uh, to that to that episode heard i was upset that i hadn't got any hugh grant related presents so mm. um, and and it's from a lady somewhere in the midwest of the united states there <laughs> seems to be a lot of hugh grant fans in the midwest yeah so um i was gonna say know, it wasn't they weren't called mary by any chance were they <laughs> <laughs> wasn't mary but um um, yeah, if you if you want something to spice up your house, spice up your life at the moment, you know these are these are great. So um, I'm sure they would be very very willing to have your uh, your service and your custom, indeed. Well, I mean they'll definitely be getting mine. I hope the shipping is is cheap <laughs> from <laughs> the Midwest, but we'll uh, we'll have to see. Speaking of spicing up your life, <laughs> shall shall we have shall we have a little discussion about and just before that a synopsis of. The Englishman who went up a hill but came down a mountain. The Englishman who went up a hill but came down a mountain. Directed by Christopher Munger and released in 1995. In 1917, an English cartographer named Reginald Anson, played by Hugh Grant, visits the small South Wales village of Fonan Garu to measure what the locals claim to be the first mountain in Wales. The villagers are very proud of their mountain and are understandably disappointed, indeed furious, to learn that when measured their mountain is only technically a hill. Not to be outwitted by a rule and the Englishman who enforces it, the villagers set out with shovels and spades to sculpt their hill into a mountain. Diggs, the Englishman who went up a hill but came down a mountain. Mm. Initial thoughts. Oh, I'm so glad you've actually asked me this because, uh, like, 
the 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 film starts and it's an, a little boy and his old and his old granddad or something is like blah, blah, blah. and then it cuts to like the credits like title sequence when it has you know Hugh Grant first billing by the way sick uh and then you know blah blah, blah saying it all the actors are in it and in the background it's got like just different just loads of different maps of Wales and they're just like zooming in on the map and then they're zooming out on the map they've got the map sideways they've got the, it's the most boring title sequence you've ever fucking seen in your entire life think of Think of the title sequences you've seen. The amazing ones back, like like obviously everyone's thinking James Bond. You know the silky ladies with the guns and the you know fucking poker cards and all that sort of stuff. Like red blood spilling out. It's literally just picture of a map. They'll zoom in a map sideways. Like Wales, what it looks like on a map is not very interesting, and that I think (laughs) very much didn't bode well. Did not bode well. Exactly. And another thing I wanted to talk about before we really get into the nitty, mm. nitty gritty here is I, maybe we should just break down the title of this yeah. movie. The Englishman Who Went Up a Hill But Came Down a Mountain. Yeah. I'm going to put it out there as the worst title of a film in modern history. It is a tongue twister if there ever was one. But you know what? I It is. And I, I was thinking that. And I think the people at Miramax, I mean, all hold up your crucifixes, um... <laughs> for you know because he was on the billing anyway i won't mention his name twat but um th- they must have looked they must have looked at this and gone i mean there must be people you know like seo like search engine optimization and stuff who look at long titles and go bloody hell like really you want to make a film called the englishman who went up a hill but came down a mountain really think how hard that was for me <laughs> to say are you sure you want to make this film and they go yes but in some ways i think they're trying to make that their quirk and also I mean, we are synopsis Simon to do a synopsis, but you can just read out the title, and to be honest, it gives you a pretty good account of the film. So to to be fair, you know, well, I mean, you're dead. You're dead right there. I was sort of thinking, well, okay, this really explains the film, yeah. well. and I was as I was watching the film, I was thinking, is there anything else to this film? <laughs> I'm so glad and you then said that. Yeah, half an hour in, I was thinking that. An hour in, I was still thinking yeah. that. And then I realised, oh, okay, that this literally yeah. is what happens uh, exactly an hour and 36 and minutes go else. by and you go okay well that was the film then good <laughs> i could have just read the title and just moved on <laughs> crikey a map maker named danson has come to measure a mountain all this way just to measure our mountain but he's got an uphill battle on his hands it's a low bet Oh, I is our mountain. Uh, 984 feet. Let's talk about Hugh Grant, because he's got top billing. That's who we're here for. Um, and we always talk about him first. So he is he is said Englishman. Um, and mm, he's a, as, as I'm sure Synopsis Simon said, he's a cartographer. They've gone to like make a map. It's World War One, And they've got to measure this mountain that the, the locals all love. Hugh Grant, what do you think of his look? We've got to go with the look. What did you think of the look? He, it was interesting. He looked like an explorer. Mm. I mean, he looked like he should be in, you know, the jungles of Brazil, or you know, yeah. in the deserts of Africa. Um, he has a sort of tweed suit plus four look, and he's got this <laughs> stupid floppy hat on. Yes, um, the so- some of the hats that he wears in this are fucking amazing they're so brilliant yeah yeah so it was a better outfit for yeah you know some wild explorer in the in the depths of yeah the amazon yeah. rather than some bloke who's just climbing up a little hill in Wales. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> and uh and well then if we're going to talk about his his uh outfit so we've got to talk just quickly about his uh accomplice um who i think we he isn't uncle vernon but we really he looks like uncle vernon from harry potter doesn't he he does i i, I thought it was him no i i looked I, it up i was, up, I was like I, I was like, i don't think it's him but it looks so much like him and they, they have very similar sensibilities like uncle vernon's just pissed off and annoyed all the time and that's very much like this guy and that again don't know his name we're just going to call him uncle vernon from now on but uncle vernon's outfit's incredible including he has a tweed suit but has decided to go for the uh the pink bright pink uh <laughs> waistcoat as well amazing incredible what well, digs talking of sensibilities oh. um it, it, it it's, it's quite interesting where this film comes in in hugh grant's annals. yeah um 
is that it was in the, it's 1995 mm. so it is the same year as sense and sensibility also the same year as restoration so wow. it's a real there's a real kind of mix of films on the yeah. spectrum here obviously one year after four weddings and your funeral in 19 mm. 94 and he really has captured that kind of he's he's continued that's that that his classic kind of hair look but a bit more extreme in some mm. ways because he's gone i mean what did you think of it it was a bit greasy for my life it was you know it really reminded me of um his look in the remains of the day where his hair was very very greasy mm. very slick back and but what i really was very interesting for me was throughout the film his hair got less greasy and less slick back and more floppy. And I, I wonder whether that was a stylistic choice where at first he's very like buttoned up and closed mm. off and English. And by the end, once he's sort of integrated a bit more into the Welsh village and, you know, and just in general, just like been a bit more chill, um, his hair has flopped down. Oh, and, oh, and, and well, I, but I want to talk about this in more detail later, but and he's become a bit more of a romantic his hair mm, flops down yes. it's less greasy of course exactly i yeah i mean maybe i don't know whether to save that chat or just to get straight into it but i mean you may as well get straight into it when you were saying oh when's this film going to get good i was sat there i think 40 or 50 minutes in going this film could really do with some romance because i am bored <laughs> i am bored and i'm horny and it delivered uh, i like yeah and and obviously i'm so glad that hugh grant was the man to do it but we had um Elizabeth. Betty, for those who know her better. Of course. From Cardiff. Betty from Cardiff. And she is sort of enlisted by Morgan the Goat. People at home must be thinking, what the, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> this is a weird film. <laughs> this is a weird film, isn't it? <laughs> Just come up with every like Welsh stereotype you can think of. That- and chuck it in this film, basically. Exactly, because there is quite a fun sequence at the beginning where the guy is explaining, he's being like, everyone in the town, because there's so many Evanses, because there's so many Joneses, you need to add on an extra little thing about them. So this is Evans, you know, you, you've got Reverend butcher. Jones, you've got Evans the Butcher, you've got, you know... So why Morgan is called the goat, I think, <laughs> as I say... See, like a goat show. I think so. And I, because I think, and I'm not, I mean, I wish I was joking, but I think that is actually, that is, that is the inference because Morgan doesn't attend church on a Sunday. Everyone knows him as the heathen. All the, all the men have gone to a fight in the war, but Morgan stayed behind and, and he's ginger and all the new kids that are born there are ginger as well. Um, and I guess some of the new sheep in town, goats in town, are probably ginger as well. Because <laughs> oh, everyone seems to call him Morgan the goat. He doesn't really like that. But I, I think that is the inference. It, 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 I mean, I hope I don't offend my well, my Welsh friends out there. But it doesn't it doesn't help the the sort of the stereotype that the Welsh are sort of sheep shaggers. No, and we we, but... we 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 we're not trying to take the piss here. That is a genuine. That is a, it's a genuine uh, stereotype, but I want to explain that for our maybe some of our international listeners. That is a that is a thing. Well, I'm taking you, I'm taking you for granted. Well, I'm taking you, well, I'm taking you for granted. Morgan the Goat, in in some of his deplorable tactics, in, enlists Betty to pretty much shag Uncle Vernon <laughs> to try and get him to stay. Because obviously, as I say, if you listen to the synopsis, when they when the cartographers Hugh Grant and Uncle Vernon go up the hill, it, they think it's a hill. <laughs> yeah, Uncle Vernon did a good job to get up there. Um, when they think it's they they say it's a hill and not a mountain, and the the townsfolk are like, "Fuck that! We're going to make it a mountain, but we've got to make them stay long enough so that we can add some mud to it." And the the great plan by Morgan the Goat is to get Betty to woo uh, Uncle Vernon. Um, but obviously, she doesn't take a shine to Uncle Vernon. She takes a shining to our young strapping lad, Hugh Grant. And who can blame her? Indeed. What did you think of their burgeoning love? Well, I mean, I, I kind of sort of nodded off by the no, time it started. No. I, that's I, but, that's when know, I woke up. Know, I was like, oh, hello. Yeah, well, I, I enjoyed it. Mm. I mean, I actually thought that they were quite a good match. Yeah. You know, he's very, very bumbling in this and he's very closed up and she basically throws herself at him and 
and, mm. and b- because I think she's been quite impressed because a man comes in with shell shock. We won't explain why. And Hugh Grant, having served a little bit of time in France, you know, takes his jacket off, gets down, kneels down, and like, and goes, "Get this man some brandy. Give me your coat. I'll put it behind his head. I'll do this and I'll do that. I'll button his shirt." He he sort of takes ownership of the of the moment, and like Tara Fitzgerald, aka okay, Betty, looks at this and she's like, "This is hot." Even though he, in <laughs> in every other moment he's been like, "Oh yeah, I, I couldn't possibly." Uh, it's just Hugh Grant at his best, and then she kisses him, and she, as I say, basically throws herself at him. She's like, "If you," and then he's he, but he says no because. I think she thinks it's because he's a gentleman. I don't know why he's sort of said no, because eventually she comes to it. But from that point onwards, he starts to loosen up and and not just be bumbling Hugh Grant. That reminded me a lot of Hugh Grant in Impromptu, where he was scared and frightened and bumbling, <laughs> but much more like Hugh Grant in like Notting Hill. He gains Hill. In confidence, exactly. doesn't he? And, it, and it's yeah, all... Yeah, he does. It culminates in that line where he says... Um... I'm not sure that I can rely on Mr. Garrod, but um, the thing is, I, I will need an assistant. I, you wouldn't, um... Me? Why not? Well, I've never been to Abyssinia. <laughs> or Aden, or Sebastopol. Then they can't speak with a posh accent for long. Well, I, I think we can get over that. I'm just a maid servant. Well, I, I don't think the word just could apply to you about anything. Was that a compliment? Yes, yes, and now, now I'm going to blush, so... Um, <laughs> would you help me? Please. Since you said please, can you bless him? No. Yes, I will. Oscar, I'm, I'm interested because this film is, is, I think we'll agree, quite bland. Was there, was there a favourite moment of yours or anything that did stick out? Well, it's interesting you say it was bland. I was I, when I came to watching this film. I'd actually, I'd actually been on a call recently with a with a client, um, and as you do, we got onto the the subject of Hugh Grant and taking Hugh for granted, oh, yeah. um, of course, <laughs> which was quite amusing. Yeah. Um, he he was talking about how much Love Actually they'd watched over Christmas, mm. and then he was saying, you know, I love Hugh Grant in that film, and I love him in Notting Hill. I watched an Englishman who went up a mountain and came down. (laughs) I watched an Englishman who went up a hill and came down a mountain, and I have to say, I thought that was crap. (laughs) Yeah. So I I was kind of apprehensive Mm. going into this one, but there were a couple of moments Mm. which I did enjoy. Mm. One of which was when they they first declare that the mountain is not a thousand feet. It's so the it to to apparently classify Mm. as a mountain, it has to be above a thousand feet. And it comes in at 980. And Hugh Grant comes down and he and he announces this. Mm. And he is just at his absolute bumbling, yes. break, bumbling well, best. Yes. Morgan, with your permission. Gentlemen, um, we have now <laughs> completed the um, survey of um, Pengu. And um, I have to inform you that it is... Uh, 984 feet. What? Now, I I, I realise that this may be a disappointment to you, um, but I I would ask you to remember that it it is just a measurement and in no way should detract from the beauty of, or or, or indeed uh, uh, your affection for this... uh, um, uh, uh, ..hill. That bit's genius, and what I love is that building up to that bit, every time Hugh Grant has tried to pronounce the name of the of the mountain, he's always pronounced it wrong. He's always like, Forangara. Uh, he's like, hello, everyone. Yeah. Um, yes, of the mountain, Forango. <laughs> it's so good. And just the, just the sort of ig- indignation and the shock on these Welsh villagers exactly. when, they, when, they, when they've been told by some English git that their mountain is not a mountain. They're just, you know... The, like they are so They're angry, incensed. and it is it's quite it is it is quite sweet mm. and quite amusing. And I think that is the comedy, mm. the comedy. I say in inverted commas that they were trying to kind of portray in this film. It's quite niche, <laughs> and you like you said at the beginning of the film, like quirky is probably the yeah. right word. But it's kind of I think the comedy comes at this like in in like how incensed the Welsh are that someone has come and told them that their hill 
their mountain is not a mountain. Mm, yes, that's it. And uh, it is quirky. And moments like that are, are, are fun. And, but you know what? It's so interesting you said the word sweet. Because I the whole way through the film, I was like, this is this is sweet. And I think it's the kind of thing that I would be like, come on, Grandma. I'm going to put a film on for us. And it's got Hugh Grant in it again, I know. But come on, let's watch it. And she and at the end, she goes, oh. And I go, yeah, it was good, wasn't it? All right, back to bed. You know, but it's the kind of thing <laughs> where, the, you know, I don't, I'm not going to show her The Gentleman. I'm not going to show her... I'm not even going to show her Notting Hill. Uh, it's the kind of film mm. where you can't really come away and... and and nothing about this is going to piss you off. Like, this is what I was saying just now to my mum. She was like, how was it? And I was like, you know what? It had no edge to it. It was like, I wouldn't, if it, I like Hugh Grant films that are actually properly really bad, because then it's like, I can talk about how bad they are. I like Hugh Grant films that are really fucking good because they can talk about how good they are. This film is so middle of the run. Mm. I don't know what to say. That's, I mean, you've 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 hit the nail on the head there, really, Diggs. It was, it was neither here nor there, oh. really. It it amazed me that a film crew had, like, you know, I in my job as a kind of journalist, communications person, whatever, I am always like probably pitching ideas and like that kind of thing, like coming up with ideas mm. and hoping people say yes to them. I don't know really if I pitched an idea about a film with some Welsh mountain and some like English bloke who has to go and measure it and then all the villagers get upset about it and I want to call it an Englishman who went up a hill and came down a mountain. I, I think I get laughed out of the room. So it just kind of, it, it sort of amazes me in some ways that a big production company has put yeah. a lot of time and effort and money into a story that's pretty mediocre. The thing is though, is there's, there's loads of, fodder like this i mean a film that comes to mind is the only thing that i can think of is like it's a film called the lady in the van with maggie smith and uh mm. oh, you know but that's a film that i'm like grandmas will love it but actually i've watched that the other day it's bloody brilliant it's amazing but it's the kind of thing that you'll stick on at 3 p.m sunday afternoon and it's like not going to offend anyone in the room and yeah and it's you know you know what it is it's people love films about communities yeah and like against the odds communities where it's like a community who have their back against the yeah. wall but all come together in support of the common goal and that's exactly what this and is be, that, and that's exactly it, right it, it reminds me of another another actually and it reminds me of another film set in wales which escapes the name of me but it's about um gay miners and it's got bill nye in it um oh mate I can't remember the name right now, but it's a really good yeah. film. And it is sort of, it, it taps into that same thing about kind of like small town Welsh nationalism mm. to, and patriotism to, to some extent about like, you know, you can't come here and tell us what to do. This is like our history, our community. You don't understand us and you can't tell us what to do. And we're going to show you ultimately that you can't, you can't go and do stuff like this. And we're going to band together as a community and, you know, for one good goal, and that—that's kind of what it is, really. Exactly, it? and it's—and that's such a universal message. So that's what I mean. Like, you—you can't—you kind of can't watch this film and not get on board with it. But that's why I mean, it has no edge to it. What I would say though is—is is, I don't know if you would be laughed out of a room if you pitched it, but I think if you then showed them the final piece, everyone would go, "That was fine." But if you if you maybe gave it if you gave it a bit more if the execution was a bit different if they really turned the dial on the quirkiness but like really went for it or if they really turned the dial on I don't know the romance or the comedy like there were loads of other elements mm. they could have really like added to or maybe tightened up um, but you know at the end of the day it just became like honestly Oscar I cannot tell you of a more bog standard film that I have ever <laughs> ever seen in my entire life taking he for granted taking he for granted. Taking he for granted. What did you think, lads? Were they taking he for granted? Oscar, it's, it gets to, it's that time of the podcast where we like to ask each other, are we taking Hugh for granted? Do you know what you're going to say? I don't know, Diggs. It's a, <sighs> this is about as hard as it gets, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. <sighs> I'm going to... I think I'm teetering more onto the yes, we are taking okay. you for granted. As much as you say it's, it is a sweet mm. film, it's middle of the yep. road. It's you know it's kind of granny watching, mm. if I can put it you that may. way. I don't I don't love the fact that Hugh stars in this film. Like I don't think it's really adding to his repertoire mm. 
I think it was it, it was quite an easy role being like the sort of English the, the sort of posh English bloke in a place with non posh English blokes. Yeah. <laughs> and the storyline like you said it didn't do much for me and I don't I don't think he like there were some nice moments in there and you know he he played he played the role as it was meant yeah. to be but I don't think it was particularly jaw dropping or or inspiring in any way so that's kind of my verdict yeah i think do you know what to to make this really bland i'm going to say this film is not taking you for granted um because it, you know it wasn't jaw dropping and it wasn't terrible so and it was sweet and it was fine and Hugh Grant was a was a bumbling posh british guy and there was, you know, and maybe I'm pinning all my hopes on this romance. But yeah, and I feel like, you know, let's be honest. The only way, what I will say is, yeah, it's not taking you for granted, but don't watch it unless it's the last Hugh Grant film you have <laughs> left to watch. And, and then you should... By that reasoning, surely it is taking you for granted. But it's not that then. bad. It's just it's just not worth anyone's time because they're really, it's not no. bad enough to, to like, to... To enjoy it being bad or to, to have something to say about it being bad. And it's not good enough for the same reasons. It's just so middle of the run. I can't explain that enough. And for that reason, we have to be split on this. You have to say it is. I have to say it isn't. Because that will show you mm. how middle of the run this boring film is. But it's not even that boring. I wasn't bored. I was just like, what have you got for me? What have you got for me? I was bo- yeah, it was it was a strange one. I to be honest, I would say I was bored pl- past the hour mark. I was mm. bored. The first hour I was still trying to figure out exactly what the point of this film was and what, you know, is there going to be anything beyond the fact that they want to build 20 foot on top of the mountain no. like and they after I figured out that was it. Yeah. I kind of switched off a bit. Yeah, yeah. I think there could have been... That's the thing. There could have been There could have been fun little set pieces along the way. There could have been little chinks in the road and, and blocks and stuff. But it didn't, never really felt like there was any real threat at all. And... I, I mean, I just... I have to get this out. I, it, you say it about the beginning where they set that up. They set that up in such an obvious and boring way. Like, they, the Englishman come into the pub and then someone goes, doesn't a hill have to be a thousand feet long to be a fucking mountain? And it, it was like, who t- who says that? <laughs> we've, we've, we got the picture. Dig thinks it's middle of the road and boring yeah. everyone. Yes. I hope you couldn't tell. Now shut up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I'll shut up. I'll let you guys get back to your lives. Oscar, you included. I mean, please don't watch this film, but do go away. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Search up Taking You For Granted uh, in those places. Email us, granted at gmail.com. Anything else to add, Oscar? Well, I'm going to just say, actually, don't... go. I would say go away and watch this film. Mm. You're not. You're neither going to gain or lose anything by watching this, and you might... Something might just flutter in that your That is heart. very true. Like, your, your days and nights at the moment, if they're anything like mine, are so bland and every day melts into the other one so watch this film <laughs> it will take nothing away from that and it, it will s- slot seamlessly in but i think that's a great shout go exactly. away and watch the film but then also follow us on all the socials fantastic all right thank you so much for listening everyone it's been an absolute pleasure oscar thank you so much thanks Jake. see you next week Taking Hugh for Granted is produced, edited and presented by Diggory Waite and Oscar Beardmore Gray. The producers of Taking Hugh for Granted would like to state that this podcast is in no way associated with the actor Hugh John Mungo Grant, nor does it endorse his views or represent him in any way. Instead, by creating this podcast, Oscar and Diggory hope to celebrate Hugh's illustrious career, reliving his old classics and shedding light on some of his hidden gems. Hugh. If you're listening, we hope you approve.